Welcome to this video brought to you by AbraVibe. Visit our webpage abravibe.com to learn about vibrations and vibration analysis. Welcome. In this video I will explain convolution of two continuous functions. The concept of convolution is very important in many fields of engineering, for example in vibration engineering and signal processing. This video will explain convolution from the perspective of understanding, rather than going into details of how to perform convolution mathematically. We denote the convolution of two functions, as here x and h, by an asterisk. The result of the convolution is a function, in this case y, which depends on the same variable as the two convoluted functions, in this case the time variable t. Before we go into details with the convolution integral, let's see why the concept of convolution is so important. First of all, for a linear system, the output equals the convolution of the input with the impulse response of the system. Second, in Fourier transform theory, and also in Laplace transform theory, convolution of two functions in the time domain corresponds to multiplication of the Fourier transforms of the two functions and vice versa. Multiplication of the two functions in the time domain corresponds to convolution of the Fourier transforms of the two functions. These last two properties are very important to explain many aspects of frequency analysis. Finally, convolution is also important because polynomial multiplication equals convolution. Although in this case we talk about discrete convolution, not continuous convolution, which is the topic of this video. The theory of linear systems says that the output of a linear system is the convolution of the input signal with the impulse response function of the system. The convolution result of y of t equals the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the product of x of u and h of t minus u du. The variable u is an integration variable, which is needed because we want the output y to be dependent of the time variable t. In my experience, this integral is intimidating to many of my students. So we will dissect it now and see that it is really not that complicated. Let us start with the two signals. I call the functions signals here because my perspective is that of vibration analysis but really you can think of them as any functions if you have another perspective. x of t is an arbitrary time signal which is the input to the linear system. It can be for example the dynamic force acting on a structure. The impulse response h of t is a function describing the linear system. Such functions are always descending with time so let us assume our impulse response has some transient behavior as shown in the figure here. We also assume it has limited length to make the illustration a little easier. This does not limit the validity of our explanation. So, what does the convolution integral mean? Let us start dissecting it. The first thing about the convolution integral is that it doesn't include the impulse response h of u, but ra rather it says h of t minus u. So, let's find out what h of t minus u means. To do this, we start with h of u. h of u is the decaying impulse response. But how about h of minus u? What is that? h of minus u is simply the function h reversed with respect to the x-axis. The next step is to explain h of t minus u which is the same as h of minus u plus t. This is obviously a shift of h of minus u along the x-axis. If t is larger than zero, then it's a shift to the right, as illustrated here. If you have trouble with this, you should look at where the point h of zero is. For h of t minus u, we obtain h of zero when t minus u is zero, that is, when t equals u. So. We have now established that h of t minus u is simply the impulse response h of u reversed and shifted to end 
at u equals t. The next step in the convolution integral is the product of x of u and h of t minus u, which is integrated produce, to produce y of t. Let's illustrate this with an animation. In this illustration, we have the impulse response shifted to t equals minus 1.5 seconds in the top plot. In the next plot, we have the input, ti input time signal x of u. In the third plot, the area of the product of x of u and h of t minus u for t equals min minus 1.5 seconds is shown. And finally, we start the animation. For t equals minus 1.4, minus 1.3, minus 1.2, minus 1.1, and then we let it go continuously as the impulse response slides through the data. Finally, we will discuss the interpretation of this. We'll consider a situation which we can model as a linear system. Let's assume you are listening to someone speaking to you. The sound you hear is then the convolution of the sound that the speaker produces and the linear system between the speaker's position, the input signal, and the position of your ear. Ok, ok, you have two ears, but let us focus on one of them just to make this example easy. If we start by assuming that you sit in a typical meeting room, the impulse response will be relatively short. What happens then is that the output you hear is the weighted sum of the speaker's voice over a relatively short time. You should hear him clearly. But what if we move the scenario to, for example, a badly designed swimming hall? Well, in this case the impulse response is much longer. This means that at each time instant what you hear from the speaker is the weighted sum of that person's speech over many seconds. The result you know. Apart from the mixing, typically the total sound level would also increase because of the increased waiting time. That is, this is how all linear systems behave. Their output is a weighted summation, integration, of the input signal. And the length of the summation is determined by the length of the impulse response. To find more information, look for the book Noise and Vibration Analysis. Signal Analysis and Experimental Procedures by Anders Brandt. The book was published by Wiley 2011. Also look for the website www.abravive.com where you will find a lot of resources for the book. For example, you will find the Abravive, the free toolbox for MATLAB and GNU Octave. You will find book resources such as the Mirada list and also uh, a problem solutions manual. You will find MATLAB Octave examples and you will find more videos. Thanks for watching.